Tulsa King season two, episode two. Let's talk about it. Stallone is doing his thing. Things are falling in place around him or not. Still in trouble with the law, women problems, all sorts of stuff's got to get unpacked. Let's get into it. Yes, folks, I'm Pops, and yes, been watching Tulsa King. We're in season two now. Dwight Man Freddy is now dealing with the fallout of season one and figuring out how to navigate forward. And there's a lot going on in episode one. We definitely moved forward with the hearing with the feds. We did we did some conflict with the other marijuana and oil tycoons. We created some stuff with uh, Tina, his daughter, being back in the mix, and a little bit with the guys, a new guy in Bigfoot in the mix, but really not a lot else had manifested there. So. Let's get an episode two a little bit on what's going on. We get a little intro at the bar with Garrett Hudlin singing. And I got to be honest, if he's actually singing, I think he actually is singing. The dude from Tron can sing. He's got a nice charisma about him. So that's kind of how the opening sequence kind of plays out. It's really done just to showcase this guy. And he's basically the undercover guy for the Kansas City mob boss. Now, we saw him briefly on the phone last week because Neil McDonough's character called. That turned out to be Frank Grillo. So if you've seen uh, some of the Marvel movies, you've seen some of these. If you've seen Frank Grillo, the guy in Purge, that guy. So Frank Grillo is really a good actor, really a good role for that sort of like stern mafioso guy. This is his underling. And he was there kind of getting the feel of the lay of the land. Basically, how much money is Dwight making? And is he in on my turf? And that kind of thing. I don't know anybody else. I'm a, I'm a little bit sick of the whole the, the reporters are outside the hotel thing. The feds are always watching. Turns out it was all sort of a bait and switch thing because he'd gone out the other side door so he could be with Tina and they go look at a house for her and her family. And that was pretty much how that kind of played out. I'm sort of over this whole Dwight's bringing the mob to Tulsa. If we've had this Kansas City mobster, uh, we've had Neil McDonough's character. Like, I don't think any of this storyline really has any any wheels and has any. it's not a dog that's going to hunt. So I don't really care about any of this. So. Then we sort of get into like the montage of all sorts of characters. Frank Grillo's character here, he's out there doing some clay shooting. They're talking to talk. Neil McDonough's character is going to go totally dirty and basically get the uh, the AG involved. So they're going to have an attorney general actually try the Manfred. We, we need him to go away. We need him to go like pulling the strings, corporate cronyism and uh, political underlings and at the behest of some uber wealthy guys. And I uh, mm. This has all been done before, guys. This was not really that interesting kind of a letdown. So the only thing that really happens in this episode of I think anything is notable is these two come up with this scheme because, yeah, sorry, Tyson, the black black dude on the left, has been Dwight's driver. He goes in and try to get a car loan. Dude stiffs him. He has all these commercials. He's really big in the Tulsa area. They come up with this scheme to go steal catalytic converters. So that's basically what happens is they go into steel catalytic converters. And there's all the little gags that kind of play out with that, um, who can fit under the cars and not. Then we fast forward to the car dealer showing up with Dwight, trying to make amends, trying to figure something out. He kind of knows Dwight's people are in on it, but nothing's really uh, concrete. And then, of course, they send Mitch in. He's going to return, quote, half of them. There's talks about buying the car dealership and all this. So it was like this odd, contrived thing that they do. The end of it is... They make a little money, but more importantly, they could get their feet into car dealerships now also, I, I guess is what they're doing. So I just feel like we're getting too broad away from like the marijuana business and the solar stuff and all, some different things that are going on. I, again, I'm kind of bored with some of this stuff. This episode really didn't have a lot of issues. Now, there was a gag or two with him still in the Cadillac Converse. That was fine. Probably the best part of the whole episode. All right, there's a little bit of Chicky in this episode. He's on this phone call back and forth with Frank Gillow's, Grillo's character because, you know, you never call my dad. Uh, hey, you never call when you came into my territory. Everybody's right. Everybody's wrong. It was fine. This actually seems like it should have been more in episode one or and it can be part of episode two. But I felt like this little weird character thing that he should have been more important. And I will say this kind of is a major contradiction to episode, uh, season one. Like, how would Chicky not know this dude surf and that he has to play? That this is exactly how the mob works. And what's the hierarchy? Because the New York guy's not on top, and now they have to play for the cake. I mean, I don't understand how it's been carved up. It wasn't well explained even to this point, and it really doesn't make sense that we went through an entire season and this phone call and interaction didn't happen. 
All right. One of the worst elements of this episode is Dwight's going to represent himself. He, quote, paid for this expensive lawyer last time and look at where that got him. And it's sort of like this silly cliche. Um, they play, they bring in the AG that we talked about. He's on the phone with Tina at some point, but it's like, dude, he has no experience whatsoever. The judge is kind of mocking the decision. I, I really just hate these type of cliches that Hollywood will dabble with. The idea that this person would represent, it's just silly. Like, I understand the argument of, listen, I paid for the attorney. I still went away. Well, you were guilty, right? So you're guilty again. So you need to find the slimy lawyer to get you off. You representing yourself is just a stupid cliche that's being inserted in the show. And it's just a waste of our time. <laughs> this isn't going anywhere. Something else that is may or may not be going anywhere is this guy. So this guy is behind bars now. He had met Dwight in the episode one and he's into like, you know, solar energy. So Dwight's going to do this whole seven and a half million deal to get a loan to do solar, solar panels, so wind, wind turbines, that kind of thing. And they go in and we have to endure this weaselly little sniveling bank guy. And there's all these gags about a free mug and a mouse pad. And this, no one has money. No one's going to loan him money. We can only do X amount. We can only do $3 million. We can only do, It's just, it was all tedious and so full of just nonsense. I don't, this episode just felt like a complete waste of time and fluff. This, this is, this is 30 minutes or so that easily could just be a couple minutes in conversations elsewhere. I don't know. I just feel like, it's a lot of padding and this is a way early in the season for this much padding. Like I just, I don't understand. I don't, I'm really disappointed. Well, the episode ends with jelly roll. That's right. Cue all of these stupid puns about jellyfish and Dwight doesn't know who jelly roll is. That's not he's a singer. He, they kind of play this. Oh, he doesn't really know anything about music. He, he talked about being a janitor. He goes in, he sings really well, of course, and ha ha jokes on Dwight. Oh, just, this is this is get you guys completely disagree with me. Blow up my comment. This is all about like a whole bunch of stuff being thrown against the wall for we'll get to it later, right? Conversations between uh Casey and New York, uh the money for the solar energy thing, the conflicts with the court case, uh all of these kinds of things are things we'll get to later on. We just needed to get I don't, I don't know if this season is going to be eight episodes, nine, ten, whatever it is. They needed an extra episode. That's what this, this is. This is literally like two minute conversations. And then this jelly roll thing was just so they could have jelly roll in the show. I don't know what agent is cross pollinated with jelly rolls people to make this happen. And it's played for a laugh at Dwight's expense. And it was just dumb and bland, in my opinion. Well, they stayed out too late drinking, so Tyson takes Dwight to his mom's house, stays in the daughter's room. There's a quick little tension at breakfast. Uh, again, this is silly. I mean, I know I like the fact that Tyson and his parents and family are back in the mix, at least in the conversation, because that has been ignored for a long, long time. I, I don't think that any of this is remotely interesting or anything other than just like jokes on Dwight because he dresses like a fool in this episode because he spent the night there. Sweet mom. And we move on to more phone calls between New York and Goody. And now it ends with, quote, the cliffhanger of, oh, Goody could be siding with New York and they'll twist and turn and backstab Dwight. And that's pretty much how the episode ends. Uh, boring filler episode. I mean, it wasn't the worst TV ever. I'm just saying of, of, the, of the Tulsa King episodes, it's a very subpar episode because nothing is happening it's all talking it's all walking sit down gag to jokes on dwight little thing here little thing there it's just a filler episode so i don't know oh boy way too wait i don't know just way too early for i don't even know why we why we needed it we couldn't figure this out over the course of a few episodes you couldn't figure out pieces of conversations i, I don't know anyway it's still not the worst tv i'm not watching agatha just saying all right, there we go, folks. You guys know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Adios, amigos.